I'm going inside Emirates' new first class. I am inside the shower on an Airbus A380. Bringing you inside private jets. I'm also getting access inside the brand new G700. Future air taxis that are coming to skies in the US, Europe, and the Middle East. I'm also getting inside the latest Etihad fleet and going inside a military plane and a cargo plane. This is where multi-million dollar deals happen. The iconic Emirates bar. Imagine refitting your Airbus with a DJ stand. I'm also seeing how this airline is gonna let you leave the country and board a plane without using any passport. So let's go behind the scenes of the future of air travel. Welcome to Dubai Air Show. I'm super excited for this one. We're going inside Gulfstream's new G500. The G500 can seat up to 13 passengers and it can have a range of 5,200 nautical miles. You're also looking at a range of about 10 hours. So that can get you from London to Dubai or New York to Milan. So the configuration as it stands now is you have four seats here facing each other and then you have a nice place here with four seats here. This becomes a really nice table. So this is a four seater section here you can do your laptop in. you can have a nice lunch on your way to Milan and then this is quite nice you have your TV you have storage here and then back here is a nice little private section you can do private meetings this is really cool to see this nice couch very like kind of luxurious feel in here on the back of the G500 I found this nice beautiful section the seats are so comfortable it smells brand new in here like you can just smell the luxury nature of it. I also love how light it is. So you have a lot of whites and beiges. It feels very spacious and airy and open. Like I don't feel like I'm in this private jet to be honest. What's really cool about this is the passenger control unit where I can look at a live camera. I can look at my flight information. I can see how much longer until I land. I can also click on Apple TV, which is configured here. Um, and if I like, let's say I play a show, through Apple TV that's gonna play on that screen right there. This is the galley of the G500 and this is where your crew is going to prepare your lunch or dinner or afternoon snack. So you have your glasses positioned up here and what's really fascinating is how technologically enabled this is. So you have a tablet here. The crew can actually modify the lighting from here. So let's say a passenger falls asleep and it's like very bright, they can actually pick on the different section and make the lights go down. And they can also control every single shade from back here. So this is a really like next level luxury where if you forget or you're not paying attention, your crew has your back. And also when the crew wants to give you some privacy, they can always just press on this button and there you go. We'll see you at the next meal service. Now going inside the G700, this is the longest range, fastest jet in the Gulfstream fleet. The G700 can go for about 14 hours. 14 hour flight, that can literally get you from Sydney to London without needing to stop for fuel. Pretty much anywhere in the world you need to get to, you can go on the G700. Let's check it out. This is technically considered the world's largest business jet because it can seat up to 19 passengers. This really does feel massive. You have this back private section here. Over here you have a place that can seat up to six people. Here is for about two people and they have a nice TV. And then in the front of the jet, you have this section, which is meant for four people. At the back of the G700, you have this nice section with this door. Oh. Oh, oh, there it is. This is an automatic door. That is pretty cool to see. So now what I've done is I've created my own private space. Now, of course, you can configure this as you like as well. So if you just push this lever, you can kind of move it and you can even face the front. So here you have your cup holders and your phone charger, which of course is going to be quite important. And then here is really interesting. You've got your table. So this can become your place to enjoy lunch on your way to New York or Tokyo. You can also do your laptop in here. You can have a nice meeting. But then again, you also have to be very careful of the UV light because you don't want to get sun damage. Notice there's two settings. There's like kind of like the blackout for when you want to sleep. And then the other setting is you just don't want like direct sunshine, but uh, you still want some natural sunlight in there. Now, you know that this model can see up to 19 passengers, but what happens if you want to turn some of these into beds? Well, then it can actually have up to 13 people sleeping on here. So if you're doing an overnight flight and you want to configure a lot of these as beds, you can do that. This becomes a bed. Another bed you would have is these two seats are extremely comfortable, by the way. And this becomes a nice twin bed. And you have some storage space here. So you 
you can have a nice glass of wine. Then you can also do a TV, you can put it on your movie. And then you can also do the surround sound music as well. This is the longest galley in a business private jet. This is 10 feet worth of counter space. So imagine all the meals that your crew can prepare on this. I mean, this is huge. This reminds me of a, a home kitchen or something. And what's really cool is if you look at the cabinets, they go up very elegantly and light, so you don't have to worry about it like being in someone's face. And if you look at this, this is really interesting. This is called a weighted glass, meaning the bottom of the glass weighs quite a bit, but the top weighs a lot less. Now, what is the point of this? Well, imagine some turbulence during your journey. This is going to ensure that your glass stays put because it's weighted. They've really managed to combine the practical elements of aviation with luxury, elegance, and design. The price, $78 million, or at least that's the starting point. Now, the G700 is now considered to be the most premium jet in business aviation. This is Riyadh Air. This is a new airline that just launched. It actually hasn't fully come out yet. It's launching in a year and a half. And this is it. This is the look of it. I asked if I can go inside and they basically said no one can go inside because it's not actually, there's nothing inside. Saudi Arabia is investing billions and billions of dollars in revamping its image and trying to become a global hub. And it sees Riyadh Air as one way to do just that. Now it might look like a local regional airline because Riyadh is a city in Saudi Arabia, but it has massive ambitions. It's already ordering hundreds of planes. It claims that it wants to be the biggest carrier in the Middle East with the most revenue. So it wants to be like a Qatar or an Emirates. And if they want to surpass Qatar and Emirates, it's going to have really big shoes to fill. Only time will tell if this is kind of just like a big marketing stunt and PR stunt, or if this can actually live up to the hype. Welcome to Emirates. I'm gonna bring you inside Emirates first class. We're gonna start with the Boeing 77 and then we're gonna go check out the Airbus A380. Let's go. Unlike a lot of airlines and exhibitors at the Dubai Air Show, Emirates just has like this open door policy. They let anyone just walk right on and check out their offerings. Welcome to business class aboard the Boeing 77. This is what a nice meal will look like on business class. This is what the bed will look like. It will do like a full recline. It's actually quite like thin, I'll be honest. A nice little pillow. You've got your fluffy eye mask. We don't get these eye masks in economy, by the way. Here, you can configure your setup for your long haul. This is the first time on an airplane that I've actually finally seen the update. So they have the USB-C charger instead of the USB. It's a little compartment for your bottle of water, for your sunglasses, for your socks. It's just nice when you have all these little storage units. I am quite impressed with how big this screen is. This is pretty massive. I mean, not a bad way to enjoy some entertainment on your long flight. Here are some new features about the new business class. For one, you have your own little mini bar where you can put multiple drinks. I mean, you could fit four or five drinks in your own seat. The second one is this seat. This is inspired by the Mercedes S-Class drivers and passenger seats. This is super luxurious and comfortable. And now you can sit on your plane as if you're sitting in a Mercedes. Also in business class, you have your own tablet because this seat is so big that like you shouldn't have to like stretch your hand to touch the screen. You can do that all from your remote, which is also its own tablet. So in between the business class seats, there's this nice divider. So if you like your neighbor, you can actually lower it uh, and get a little bit more visual with them. Here are three new things you need to know about Emirates economy class on the 777. So for one, they've changed the color of the seats. It's kind of like this bluish green. Number two, they've gotten rid of that joystick and now it's a bigger screen. It's over 13 inches and now it's entirely touchscreen. Another update is instead of just having a USB charger, they finally added USB-C as well. So they've kept the USB, which is interesting, but they've added USB-C. I'm about to go inside the Emirates first class cabin. Let's check this out. So you know how sometimes you get on a plane and you'll hand over your jacket here in your cabin, you have a place for your jacket. You have like a hanger. You can just like have it all with you. There's multiple different compartments here. You can put your headphones, your shoes, anything you want. So once you sit inside your first class cabin, you will see, you will be greeted with an Emirates welcome gift. And here's what you get, some eye cream, facial toner, pillow mist and sleep oil. You also have a little notebook. You can do your journal, you get a pen and this little card that says your journey starts here. This is a new addition you might see. 
they have virtual windows. So even though I'm in the middle of the airplane, I have virtual windows. These are all screens so I can feel like I'm looking outside when in reality, I'm totally inside right now. It's cool, but it's also still fake. I mean, I'm not getting any natural sunlight right now. So I definitely, if I'm gonna be paying this much, I want a real window seat. And I even have these buttons, which is so strange because it's not an actual window. So it's not like I need to get rid of the sun. Is this just to overcharge us? I mean, if you're paying for a cabin, you don't want to just look at a wall, so I guess I get it. So now that I'm done looking inside the Boeing 777, let's check out the Airbus A380. I'm now on the Airbus A380. You see a lot of similar changes to the Boeing 777 in terms of the new colors, the bigger screens, they've added USB-C. On the Airbus, they still have the joystick. It's a little bit smoother than the joysticks I usually see when I fly, um, but it is still a joystick nonetheless and the TVs are not quite as big as the Boeing 77. One of the coolest part about the Airbus A380 is of course, it is two stories. So I'm gonna take you upstairs of this Emirates plane. The first thing you see when you enter through the back is of course the iconic Emirates bar. This is a place where when you have really long flights, you like to hang out. Now, I've never flown business class or first class on Emirates, but from my friends who do, they say they love to hang out here for most of their flight. What is the most popular drink here? Everyone loves a good Aperol spritz. A nice Aperol spritz. Yeah. They even have this little lounge area in the back of the plane on the Airbus. So if you don't like your seatmate or you just want a break, you can come out here and hang out and make a new friend. So here at the Dubai Air Show, they will actually let you sit in the business class seats. How are the seats? Everything is excellent. Once you're on the Airbus A380, you see a similar kind of setup on business class. You see the nice Mercedes S-Class inspired seats. There's a lot of different places for your feet. You can do here, you can do up here, especially when it becomes a bed. It's quite nice. And here's what they give you here on business class. You got your headphones and then socks and eye shades, a little bit more elevated than what we get in economy. I've now entered first class on the Emirates Airbus. And the difference between the Airbus and the Boeing is that remember we just saw these fully enclosed suites like you have complete and total privacy it's like your own room but here on the airbus it's not fully closed i mean it's still kind of private but also like if you really want you can look over <laughs> one thing i like more about the airbus is these bar and lounge areas so the the bar in the back that's open to first and business class passengers the one in the front that's open to first class passengers only. The first class suites here on the Airbus are very spacious, even though they don't go up to the ceiling. In a weird way, I actually almost prefer this because they're more open. And this screen right here is just huge. You have actually three screens. You have one joystick, one tablet, and then of course your main TV. This is really cool. So remember on the Boeing, we had the new mini bars that are just kind of open and chilling and you could see what's there. In a way, this is all, all actually cooler because it's like a little private hidden mini bar look at it it's rising as we speak and that fits a lot of drinks so here's a little writing drawer so you can journal or write your notes and then they have a little vanity section where you can make sure you're looking good before landing your seat control is all through the tablet so you can do your dining option you could do the lounge even if i hit bed this will convert into my flat bed so there's technically two bars you have one in the front one in the back the one in the back is much more spacious and it's also more of a, like a lounge area as well. One of the most iconic parts about the Airbus A380 is the shower. Now the shower is behind me as you can see here, but this is a massive bathroom. I cannot believe they would dedicate so much space to a toilet, a sink, a changing area. There's mirrors. I mean, this is huge. This is this was honestly bigger than my room in New York City and I'm on an airplane. And over here they have Bulgari perfume uh, for men and women, I believe. These are the different things that you can use while you're taking your shower. You've got a hair dryer, you've got razors, you've got combs, even toothbrushes, all of that stuff. So a few years ago, Emirates introduced premium economy and it's not available on most flights, maybe just to the US and certain countries. What is it? It's basically nicer than economy, but it's not quite business class. So you're not gonna get a flatbed, but you are gonna get a pretty comfortable seat. I mean, this is definitely more comfortable and spacious than your seats back in economy. And that recline is much better than economy. Again, it's not a full flatbed, but wow, that's nice. I can imagine this being very annoying though for the person behind me. This is a $93 million fighter jet. Boeing's F-15 EX Eagle II is an upgrade of the F-15 E-Strike Eagle fighter jet. It has a new digital cockpit, better radar and electronic warfare systems, and can carry more weapons. The F-15 EX is meant to replace the US Air Force's old F-15Cs and F-15Ds. 
And I meet two of Boeing's representatives. Just unbridled power. The F-15's always been an incredibly great maneuverable airplane. Now we've overlaid digital flight controls on a really solid foundation. Cockpit, if you could get in the cockpit, it is the most modern fighter cockpit we've got. This huge 10 by 19 display, all the information comes to a single place. Touch it, you can use hands-on throttle and stick. Uh, it's just really the right plane at the right time for the right warfighter. It's a really great airplane, I'm excited about it. What's being done to keep costs under control for, uh, for this? Yeah, I mean, the, the current economic environment and, and coming out of COVID, like those pressures are real. Uh, we are focused um, on affordability for the platform. Um, you know, we are, the, the digital investment that we've made in the forward fuselage and our full-size determinant assembly will allow us to drive down um, the build cost uh, internally. We're making investments in robotics and lean activity inside the factory. If you've flown an F-15, it flies just like an F-15, only better, right? So we got more power coming out of the GE-129 engines. The flight controls are a little bit more responsive because they're digital, so now I can be just a little bit faster than the human in some cases. I think, our, I think our biggest selling points over the competition is, first of all, there's the backing of, a lot of, in a lot of cases, U.S. government. So, you know, you look around at who's flying it, uh, you look at who you go to war with, who you can integrate with, that's something that customers look at. A long, long history of combat performance. No other airplane has 104 to zero aerial victories like the F-15C does. Numerous countries, many in this region, have, have used the F-15 to defend their country, take it to war, and gotten all their aviators home safe. She's just good looking, right? It's a sexy jet, right? It's loud, it turns inside, the air show's gonna turn inside your pocket. In a couple hours, we're gonna go outside and see this firsthand. Guys, I will see you there. All right, awesome. 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 Thanks so much, Thanks. appreciate your time. Thank Thanks. you. Thank you. Right now, every time you travel, you need a passport, but coming in the summer of 2024, you're gonna be able to just leave only using your face. And I mean every single checkpoint, from dropping your luggage, to leaving immigration, to even boarding your plane. Now, of course, facial recognition is not new. We even see it in Los Angeles airport. When you board an international flight, they're just looking at your face. But what's crazy is now there's no turnstiles. There's just this open walkway and you can literally walk without stopping, without pausing. And these cameras are taking 20 pictures per millisecond to ensure if you are really you. And if you're registered and everything's good to go, you're gonna be on the green side as identified. And if you're not, you're going to be not identified and either crew or security can come and check in and see what's going on. I'm not surprised it's coming, but it's cool to see that it's actually coming. They've given me a time, June to July, 2024. You just need to register through Emirates, register your face, register your identity, and then you're good to go. So it does make me wonder, is one day this passport gonna be obsolete? So now imagine how many people at once can go through immigration. I mean, in theory, if you use technology like this, you've completely eliminated any lines. And now when I'm boarding the plane, I'm I'm able to just walk on again without any turnstiles or anything. It's just gonna, in theory, identify my face. Let's see if it works. And as long as it's green, I'm good to go. I'm ready to board the flight. Again, no waiting, no boarding pass, no passport even. I've just arrived at Airbus's pavilion. I'm gonna take you inside a cargo plane, a passenger plane, and then we're gonna end in a military plane. Let's go. This is my first time going on a freight airplane. I've only been on like passenger planes. And this is really interesting because already my brain is so confused because I'm looking for the seat. So what Airbus will do is actually convert a passenger plane into a freight carrier after about 15 years. Why? Because let's say a plane can last for 25 years if it's a passenger plane. If you convert it earlier on to a freight plane, then you can bring the life cycle up to 32 years. About 10% of all the planes you see in the sky are actually dedicated to freight. This is so crazy to be in a plane that doesn't have seats, that's literally just meant for freight and cargo. And what's really interesting here is how small it feels. Like it's really hard to imagine uh, seats and people in here. And of course they'll even eliminate the toilets because again, there's nobody back here. This is just for freight and cargo. So how do you convert a passenger plane to a freight plane? Well, you start by cutting out a giant hole in the plane and then they have to build an entirely new door and a lever so that it can open and close. And it might sound relatively easy, but this can take around five months. 
just for this section of the plane. And then it is through this massive hole that the containers can come in and out. This is inside the Airbus 330-800. This is a very popular military plane. It's made by Airbus. I'm actually sitting in one that is for the United Arab Emirates. Airbus makes this and they've sold over 280 aircrafts to 37 different countries. This can fit up to 70 troops. So imagine 70 different troops on here ready to go out and be deployed and it can also quickly configure between military personnel or regular passengers as well this plane can do a lot of different missions from transporting goods supplies medical supplies or like i said troops it's crazy to sit in a military plane like this it's actually very loud and it's like i don't know it reminds me of the movies the idea behind this mock-up is actually kind of like a yacht club, kind of like imagine you're taking your friends on a trip to Ibiza. This is how you want to show up. I'm joined now by Clemens, who is VP of sales at Lufthansa Technique. What are you showcasing this year? So the whole city talks about the 777X, and we also like these big, big birds. And um, But we don't want to squeeze 400 people in there. We just want to squeeze like 50 in there. And we came up with a private jet solution for uh, ultra rich people. So here in the front, you see, it's, we call it the cocoon. Here's a bedroom and you can close it. So you have really all the privacy you want, maybe. We also have a gym here, we have a private office. Here we have a little lounge area, we have a conference area, and then here for you guests for the entourage area. And what are you seeing as kind of the biggest trends that these ultra VIPs are looking for when doing their configurations? Well, we see our audience is getting younger and younger, so they want a more modern design. It's and that's the, what- It's the Bitcoin money, it's all that crypto. <laughs> exactly, right? Yeah. But they still want to have maybe some, some influence from the past, but they also want to have the modern, sleek design. And that's what we see now. Can you talk about kind of a range that it costs to configure a uh, 777? Starts about 120 million to 155 million more or less. But I mean, to open whatever you want, if you want a lot of gold, it's even more. Can you give me a use case on some of the typical customers? So our target audience is a head of states, royal families, but also um, yeah, ultra rich individuals. Yeah. Very cool. Well, thank you so much. For You're welcome. Very good to be here. I am super excited for this one because I'm going to go inside Etihad's brand new Dreamliner, including its new business class experience and upgraded economy. Let's go. This is it. This is inside Etihad's new business class experience on the Dreamliner. Talk to us about some of the coolest features on the new business class. Where to start? We have a lot of new cool mm -hmm. features to introduce, starting from the 4K fully HD screen. We have here displayed all our Armani Casa product, of course, in collaboration with the great Italian stylist Giorgio Armani. So every piece that you see on this tray is actually online on our aircraft and of course designed specifically for us. Have your blankets, your pillows, all Armani Casa. So over in this section, you have a whole area for your phone, your tablet. And what's really nice, I'm seeing this more and more, it's very cool to see on Etihad, is a wireless charger. Also here in the business class seat, the door still closes quite nicely, but a new change is that the wall is higher by two inches and the seat is lower by one inch. So now you have an increase of three inches to give you more of a sense of privacy. On the Dreamliner, you have 32 business class seats. Definitely new, improved, and luxurious, but I wanna see what the upgrades are to the economy experience. Let's go back. Inside Etihad's brand new economy experience, you're gonna notice a nice fabric pillow. This is probably the biggest pillow you will see in economy class. One thing I love is that the blanket does not come in a plastic wrap. This is a massive issue facing many industries right now, which is single-use plastic. So they've eliminated all the single-use plastic across the board on the Etihad experience. This is really cool. This is called a fixed wing headrest so instead of you falling asleep on your neighbor who you may or may not know they have it like so you can actually just rest your head on one side or the other now if you're on these seats you're gonna go to the right if you're on this seat you're gonna go to the left but what's also cool is you can even adjust this a little bit so I have a little bit of a kind of friction here on both sides this is also one of the biggest TVs I've seen in economy class you're looking at a 4k TV that's 13.3 inches this is really cool so one thing Etihad has done is eliminated all single-use plastics while most airlines you eat your food and then they throw this away right but this is actually reusable so they will continue to use it and once it ends up being out of its life cycle they'll return it back to the distributor they will crush all the 
tableware and then reuse it and create more stuff. Again, really cool because a lot of times airlines talk about sustainability, but they're not actually putting in action to move toward a sustainable future and to eliminate single-use plastic. On long-haul flights, so that's flights more than six hours, on Etihad you will get this commemorative bag and this is to commemorate their 20th anniversary and this is really cool so as you enter the flight as you go to your seat this bag is already on your seat and inside is not only your blanket but also your eye mask uh, cream earplugs your headset and you are meant to take this off of the plane and reuse it it's really nice that they do this because this is another way that they can eliminate single-use plastic this is the offerings for the kids so you have lots of games and toys and nice blankets this is a partnership they have with warner brothers world abu dhabi where you're able to actually see the different characters from the park and it's kind of like an extension of the park and you get some pretty cool swag from the park itself Two years ago, the UAE became the first Arab nation and the fifth country in the world to successfully land on Mars. And since then, they have even greater ambitions in their space exploration program. The UAE Space Agency wants to become a leader in space science and technology. It sent a probe to Mars and launched UAE's first satellite in 2015. This is hoping to inspire a new generation of scientists and engineers and help make the UAE a global leader in space. One of the big themes this year at Dubai Air Show is EV tolls. These are electric vertical aircraft. They take off like a helicopter. They can fly like a plane. We're seeing a lot of companies enter this space. We're seeing billions of dollars become invested in them. They're basically air taxis. So now I'm going to explore three different companies to see what they're doing in this space and how we might be flying like the Jetsons. This is called Midnight by Archer. It's a California-based company, and they want to bring air taxis to the skies of New York City and Chicago in 2025. In fact, they're working on their FAA certification right now. And this is a big deal. United Airlines has already confirmed to buying 200 of these. That's a $1 billion deal, which if you do the math, that means this is going to cost about $5 million. And the point of this is to be used like an air taxi. So imagine getting from Manhattan to JFK Airport, or you're in Chicago and you want to get to the airport, you don't want to sit in traffic for an hour, you hop on an air taxi. They want to make it so that for a hundred bucks, you can hop on a seat and get to your destination without having to sit in traffic. So this is it. This has room for one pilot and four passengers. It's not autonomous, not quite yet. You're still going to need a human to operate it. This is it. This looks like a very comfortable seat. And then in the back, you have two passengers here. It's actually quite nice. Every passenger has their own seat and then they use a kind of digital screen to say welcome, your name, where you're going, all of that cool stuff, very high tech. What makes this so incredibly unique is these propellers. So you have six on the front, six in the back, and they face vertically for the takeoff. That's a takeoff like a helicopter. And then mid-flight, they can actually move like this and then become like a plane. The technology is insane. That is so cool, so crazy. And 12 propellers is a lot. So if one of the propellers dies or runs out of battery or even two of them, no worries, you can still get to your destination because they've designed it and engineered it in a way that safety will come first. This can travel at 159 miles an hour. Let's say you were gonna go from New York City to Newark Airport. That might take you one to two hours in a car and traffic. This could get you there within seven to 10 minutes. These are meant for short range things like 20 to 40 miles. So that's why it's called an air taxi. It's not meant to get you like really far. It's not meant for you and your, your family. It's meant for you to purchase one seat and get from point A to point B in a quick amount of time and avoid traffic. You might be saying, well, hold on. Isn't this just kind of a helicopter? Well, you would be wrong because this is 100 times quieter than a helicopter. One of the main reasons we don't have more helicopters in big cities is because of how noisy they are and noise pollution. But now if you can essentially fix that and create something that's quiet, that's sustainable and energy efficient, now this company has huge potential. So I'm curious what you think. Let me know. Do you think this is how we'll be getting around? All right, so I'm sitting with Nikhil of Archer. Tell us about what we're sitting in right now. We are sitting in uh, Min uh, Archer's Midnight Aircraft. So this is our production ready aircraft. This aircraft is all electric and it's VTOL, meaning it's vertical takeoff and landing. That's amazing. So it's really, we're seeing air taxis of the future come to life. I know you're uh, working on certification and aiming for 2025 liftoff. That's right, that's right. So our plan is to be in service in New York City by 2025. 
working really closely with the U.S. regulators to do that. And really excitingly, we're working with the Abu Dhabi government and the Dubai government to be right here in the UAE by 2026. Amazing. And what kind of price would we be looking at if, let's say, I'm in, if I need to go from Midtown East in New York yeah. to uh, Newark, Newark Airport? That would be 100 bucks, maybe 120 bucks. The wow. goal for this is to be just as affordable as taking an Uber or a taxi. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah. And what are you doing to make that happen? So we are working on this aircraft here, the midnight aircraft that we're sitting in. Sitting in. Uh, it's made out of carbon composites and it's all electric. It's got 12 rotors on it. That makes it redundant and safe. That allows us to manufacture these really affordably. The maintenance is really cheap and uh, there's almost no energy cost whatsoever. Do you see a time where you can actually get like a longer duration? Like you take off like a helicopter and you get like two or three hours like a plane and then, you know, maybe in sure. 10 years. Well, the, the good news is batteries get better every single year. And so within three to four years, people won't even be talking about it. You can fly these from New York to Boston, New York to Philly, um, any of those sort of routes. Well, cool. last question I want to know. Yeah. I'm sitting inside here. Cool. Feels very futuristic. Tell me about this. So these, you know, all the pieces in here are really made to think about what the world-class consumer experience for Archer users will look like. Here you can see your name. So when you come in, you'll already have your name sitting there. So you'll say, okay, Nikhil, uh, I'm sitting in 1A, you can charge your phone here, sit back and relax for a 10 minute ride. Great to hear. So Air Taxi is coming to New York City 2025. Absolutely. Amazing. Thank Good. you so much. Thank Appreciate you. your time. Pleasure. I'm sitting now in what's called the Lilium Jet. This costs $10 million and it's part of the EV toll concept. So is it a helicopter? Is it a plane? It's a little bit of both. It'll take off like a helicopter, fly like a plane. The price is $10 million. They already have more than 700 people wanting this, putting in their intent to buy this. They're already starting production of this in 2023. They're gonna do production in Munich, and in the next two years, they wanna have this actually certified so that it can take off throughout Europe. They're also aiming to take off in the US, but they tell me that their first market that they see this actually lifting off in is here in the UAE and possibly Saudi Arabia as well. This is a lot bigger than a lot of other EV tools. You're gonna have one pilot and between four to six pilots passengers and the range is 175 kilometers. This is the Oryx. This is like an air taxi. It can seat up to three people. They're aiming to have this approved to fly through the skies of Europe by 2028. Once this takes off, this can fly for between one hour and an hour and a half. And the maximum weight is 1300 pounds. Who is the Oryx designed for? It is designed for civil application, but also there are multiple applications beyond that that go into more, more service sort of domains. Um, but primarily the vision is for passengers. And why are you looking in regular for approvals in Europe and not say like Dubai, which is like a little bit more? So we are connected with the regulators in Dubai. I think currently in terms of the leading regulators, it's definitely us, the CAA and the FAA. So, so we look at it from that point of view. If we are working towards those regulations, we're able to answer most needs uh, globally. I think the idea is for us to be able to do it concurrently in the future. I'm excited to go inside Qatar's Boeing 787 Dreamliner. It has 11 of these in its fleet. Let's check it out. This is inside Qatar's business class experience. I really like it. I like how spacious it is. If you're friends with your neighbor, you can actually bring this down like really low so you can like enjoy a meal with them together. And if you don't know them, you can just bring this up. It's kind of cool but there's only one divider in between the two seats. So you have to make a decision together on that. Now on the Dreamliner, there is no first class, only business class. But I have to be honest, the business class is very nice and um, it can feel quite private as well. You even have a sliding door here. This bed becomes a 79 inch flat bed. And then this is the amenities kit right here. And you have quite a good amount of counter space. And then you have, wow, that is quite a big table space. Plenty of space for food, computer, it's actually really big, one of the bigger ones I've seen. And then you also have all this counter space. So it really makes for a nice, comfortable flight. Never seen anything like this on a plane before, but they actually have a wireless charger. Let's see. Oh, no way. That is actually really cool. You don't have to get out your charger, your cord. You can also connect your headphones 
to your screen. So you don't have to use the like clunky headphones that they sometimes provide. You can do your AirPods, which is super cool. This kind of doubles as your vanity center. There's a mirror here, but then there's also a little storage area too. Maybe you put your passport or something in there. And this is how you can control your seat. You've got a lot of different options. If you want to just do your flatbed, you just press this and it'll all kind of take care of itself. So it is interesting to see kind of how different Emirates and Qatar is, especially with their presence here at the air show. Emirates has a lot of cabin crew. They're super smiley and excited to meet you and talk to you. They're just like trained to be very like fun. Qatar, not so much. It's a little more serious. Like, oh, did you talk to the media team? Did you do this? And what's also interesting is they've actually blocked this off. I mean, they're like, ah, who needs to see economy? All right, we got access. This is the economy offering. One thing I do love about Qatar is their seats. They're very like comfortable and they're very plush as well. They're also very thin, same as Emirates. Something about when I fly Qatar versus Emirates, I feel more like I'm in a home in Qatar. I don't know what it is about the interior design or whatever, but I feel like it's a little bit more cozy than in an Emirates plane. When I'm in an Emirates plane, I feel like I'm on a plane. And that is a wrap from the 2023 Dubai Air Show. Let me know in the comments what was the coolest thing you saw in this video. As for me, getting inside those Gulfstream private jets was probably amongst my highlights. I also like seeing some of the sustainable initiatives by Etihad, and I'm super excited about the future with eVTOLs, the ones that will take off like a helicopter but fly like a plane. I want to know what you think, so let me know. And while you're at it, check out more of my videos and don't forget to follow.